Now it's ready for the trim. And I like the iron on my right hand. And I like, I usually work from this um, side. Make sure that the patterns will match up when I come back down. So I may have to put a false top as well. Um, all right, so start. Notice I don't have any of the mitered turns on this because I don't have the cross, which makes it a lot easier, unless I have to put one at this end. So this is where I want it to be and I can go all the way down. Hopefully it's still in the camera. Yes. Alright, now again, I would want to miter this corner and I want to see if I can make it without having to do a false end. I really prefer that. But I can see it's not going to work. Just as soon as I make that corner, I can see it. Here's the center of my fleur-de-lis, and it meets off-center on this pattern. Now, for this to look nice and for it to come back the same way, this would have to be the middle, meet the, be the middle of the fleur-de-lis, and you can see how it pulls up, that up. It's not going to work. So, we're going to just have to cut it off here. And go down this side and then come back and put a false top and bottom on it. Now I did, I mentioned it yesterday, but I really didn't show you or discuss it, although it, it, you do see it on the, the seminar videos because most of the people in the seminar, when they put down the trim, they run the trim all the way out to the edge because the edge trim, let's say it's going this way, because the edge trim going around covers that raw edge. And often they even use the same trim for this, for this part as for the edge, so they blend nicely. And even if they don't, uh, even still, they, this, it's usually a way, it usually looks good, it usually works. You can't use this trim at the edge, it's just too big. It won't work at the edge. So, but there is a narrower type of this. It's not exactly the same, same pattern, same colors, but it has, it looks more black than, than this one. This is more, this has black in it, but it, because it's smaller, it, the color's more compact and it looks a little different. Uh, one of the pictures on the, in the video of a vestment that someone made at one of the seminars, I'll point it out to you, it has that trim and you, you'll, so they, they go well together. Um, but also hers, she used this trim, but she used, she ran it out to the edge and you'll see the difference. Not that it looks, it looks bad, it looks very good. I just didn't want it with this one. I don't really want to see any trim at the edge, which is why I took on this particular vestment, which is why I took the gold, this narrow gold trim instead of a, a, the, the navy blue one. I want, this, this trim is very eye-catching and with the, with the applique that I have, I really want your eye to focus on that and nothing else. And so I don't want trim at the edge to pull your eye away from the center. And again, those are judgment calls. You have to make as, as the artist, as the designer. All right, I want, these to match up, these to match up. So this first one is this one, and it's coming through the, bo the bottom of this. So the, the middle of this floor de lis is where the side of this is, and it's going to go down the center of these floor de lis. All right, now I need to do false tops and bottoms. All right. I want I want the burgundy next to the gold, not the gold next to the gold. So I'm going to put the burgundy in the center here. So 
So I'm going to put the burgundy in the center here. This is the center now. And so this is the way it would miter. So I'm going to put, actually, I'm going to I need some room here. I need to leave leave some room here. Even though these are sticking up here, it's not going to matter because there's going to be another piece of trim that goes across here. And I need to leave room for that. Unless I actually want to use this as for the trim. And I think I think that's what I'm going to do. You won't understand what I'm talking about now, but you will when you see we put when we put the back and the front together. The back will meet here, and then where the two, where the, the raw edge, where the two meet, we need to cover with a trim. And so, this is a good trim because it's wide. This is a good trim. Rather than try and leave room for that trim and have again have that trim up against this, I rather use just this one trim. And it will have to go from edge to edge, but that so we don't need a piece at this end. We're just going to have to put a false bottom. So I'm going to turn it around and do do this end here. And this is going to be have this is this little curve to this, which was the way it was cut. But I'm going to have to have it straight because I want this straight edge straight. So I'm going to have to trim that off, and, and I'll do that when I get there. I'm not ready to trim it yet. So this is going to be the middle. It's the middle of my pattern and I want the burgundy. So I'm going to pin those together so I know where, the, where that is. And then this is going to be mitered and it has to meet this edge this is, and this corner. So, And it should be, if you can see it, I think you can. This edge and the straight, the edge that I've turned should be the straight same. This edge and the edge that I've turned should be the same. And then I know that I've got right angles here. And the corners will meet. If it's straight. Okay, so. And I'm going to put a pin here just to hold it while I get a piece of stitch witchery to shove in that pocket. Now I take an I take about oh a couple inches and I fold it in half if you and maybe in half again to get a nice I don't make it into a ball. It's flat, but it's a couple layers of stitch witchery is what I'm using. In case you didn't get that idea yes and I'm gonna stick it in that pocket in here and then I want to hit it with the iron and all I'm doing is gluing that those pieces in the place where I want them I'm going to do the same with this side I'm going to turn it under making sure that it lies at right angles. I could tell that by this edge and this edge, and this edge and this edge. I'm gonna pin it. And take a piece of stitch witchery. Fold it a couple times. You could leave it like that, but you're, I don't, I don't want to make sure it doesn't stick out. And stick it in the pocket. And press it. Take all these pins out. Now I have this piece. Now you're going to turn it over. I want to trim this. I want to trim this back. I need to have the point exactly here. I mean the fabric, you can't tr trim the fabric back here. But you can here. 
So on this side, can't see it because it's glued. On this side, I can trim the start the trimming the fabric way back here, away from the edge. But I'm going to have to trim it up to the point, right, so that I end right there. If you you could, if you trim further than that, it will stick out it, leave back. And if you trim closer, it will cut your corner. So I'm going to just lay this back like this, and I'm of course the battery ran out just as I was cutting it. But we have to cut the other side yet. So what I went, did was I started back here and I cut up to up to this point. But I didn't you don't cut across the point. You cut right up to it. All right, this side, same thing. I'm going to fold this back so that I can see the point here and I'm going to start cutting back here out of the way up to that point so that on the front you have a straight point and it's not cut off. Of course I'm showing you beyond the camera, right? Exactly. So it, you have it started back cutting back here all the way up to the point. The same on the other side. Back here up to the point. And that's ready to go down. Except that now I have to trim off this bottom here. this in place where I want it. Um, no. No, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. I need to, because I'll be having trim around the bottom. And I need to have a place for that trim. So, if anything, I might even want to move this up a little further. Like there. Because my fab, my trim, this is my trim. And I could cut this off when I when I'm ready to do my lining. Actually I'm gonna cut it now. I'm on a straight edge here, not a curved one. Again, you can chalk a line. I feel more comfortable doing it that way. Okay. All right, so you see I could really put, put this anywhere I want it and make the corner, but I, I'm moving it up enough, just enough, that I'll have room for, for this trim. Here. Okay, this 
So that's where I want I'm going to put a pin there. And put stitch witchery under both edges. I'm going to put some tins in here because there's no stitch where it's right here in the corner because it's mitered, it would stick out unless I bend a piece. So I'm just going to put some pins there. So, that it, But I'm going to sew it now and I'll be sewing across these to make sure. And uh, then this will be finished. And then we can start lining. The lining is probably the most time consuming, but it's not difficult.